Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the Axios House. Welcome to this event on the power of the Latino vote. I'm Julio Vaqueiro. I'm the anchor of Noticias Telemundo. I'm very, very happy to be here. And just to get started, I want to welcome for the first interview uh, stage, sorry, welcome to the stage, Arizona Senate candidate and Congressman Ruben Gallego. How are you, sir? Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. So, we talked about a week ago. That's right. We did it in Spanish, you, perfect Spanish. <laughs> I wish that was true. Yeah, no, it, it was, it was. Now we're doing this in English, I have to work a little harder now. But now you know how I felt last week. Uh, now we're back at your hometown. How do you feel? Uh, you know, it's, yeah, I left here uh, more than 30 years ago, actually. Um, but it's good to be back and see family. Um, you know, it, um, uh, it's always uh, good to, to see where, where you started, uh, and it's kind of, you know, coming to full circle with with what's happening now with the Senate race. Yeah, so you were raised at the South Side, yep. correct? Yeah. Three younger sisters. Three younger sisters. Raised by a single mother. Single mom, that's right. Now you're coming back as a U.S. congressman. That's right. In a race to become a U.S. senator. Yep. So it's the, I mean, it's the American dream. It is. I mean, I... I mean, like, I feel my whole family's been living the American dream. You know, we, uh, my, my mom raised us on her own. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, I was walking. She was a secretary just down the street here at the, uh, I think it's the Aeon building. It used to be, like, uh, Americo or something like that back in the day. So I used to come visit her uh, when she was a secretary for a couple lawyers. And it was, it was, it was interesting to kind of see, like, because one day I thought I would be a lawyer. Thank God I avoided that. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, she really did a great job. We actually are a success story, whether uh, I win the Senate race or not. You know, she uh, sent, you know, four kids to college. None of us were supposed to go to college. She went back and got her degree. You know, we have a, you know, a teacher. We have a businesswoman. Uh, I have a, a sister who's a doctor here at Northwestern Medical University. I mean, it's it's really is a, an amazing story about America. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the race. Um, it, it could be really consequential. Your race against Kerry Lake, uh, your Republican opponent, it could define the the balance of power in the Senate. Yeah, no pressure, right? Uh, no pressure. Okay, exactly. got it. Yeah, so, yeah. so Stop in. what's <laughs> how high are the stakes? Look, I think the stakes are high. You know, there, there's a direction this country can go into or not, right? And I think the the stakes are extremely high, especially for Latinos, right? If you look at the Latino community in Arizona, it is an aspirational community. It's growing. It's people that want to start businesses, own homes, want to be able to send their kids to college, they want to live as part of the American dream. Uh, and the what Carrie Lake and the Republicans are offering will not take them into that direction. Uh, and so, as someone who you know. I am here because I always had aspirations of, of living and accomplishing the American dream. Uh, the most important thing of being able to do that is actually believing that you can do that, right? Actually seeing that, hey, I can go to college. Yes, I can get a scholarship. Yes, I can start, uh, buy a home. Understanding that, that you can do it and knowing that people are fighting for you is just half the battle when you're in the kind of a you know, poor, poorer economic status like I was. Uh, and um, you know what, what I see coming from the Republican Party and in particular from my, my opponent, Kerry Lake, is that they're not offering solutions. They're just offering more division. They're just telling you who to hate, not what to do, what you're going to do. So you did talk about ex the extremism in your opponent in our yep. last conversation. And you talked about the importance of bipartisanship and your ability to work yep. across the aisle. How can you assure uh, voters that you will be able to deliver legislation? Well, we go back on, on what we've done. I mean, just last year I passed uh, the Native American Child Protection Act, uh, a bill that was uh, in the past sponsored by uh, John McCain. I passed it out of the control of the Republican-controlled House, out of the control of the Natural Resources Committee that's also it, and it passed with unanimous consent. If you look at the last 10 years in general, I've been on the Armed Services Committee and uh, past chairman Intel Special Operations. That particular committee does a lot of very sensitive things in this country, and we have to craft a uh, you know 10 billion upwards of 10 billion dollar budget. And I don't just craft that. I worked across the aisle with my Republican colleagues to put a budget together to make sure that our war fighters have the best capability and make sure that they have the best uh, chances when it comes to actually uh, war. And it's just on and on. All the bills I've ever passed have been in a bipartisan manner. Now, but can you work with everyone, including, say, folks like Senator Ted Cruz? You had a, a public 
tension with him Did after I? the Ovalde shooting? <laughs> Some language that can be re cannot be uh, repeated yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, look, I think it's going to be on a case-by-case -case method. Like The focus on everything should be what is the end result? Am I going to be able to make my community stronger, better, and more successful? If I can find the person to work across the aisle with, I'll do it. Uh, at the end of the day, what matters is delivering for you know Americans and uh, putting your partisanship aside is, is part of your responsibility as being an elected official. Yeah, look, some Republicans have actually endorsed you in your state. We correct? are, but yeah. do, do you see that as an endorsement to your policies or more of a rejection to Trumpism? Well, look, I think it's a combination of of, of both. Uh, to be honest. Uh, I think a lot of it's because of my bipartisanship in the last you know, 20 years that I've been in Arizona, working across the aisle when I was at the State House. The first bill I passed at the State House was to bring uh, in-state tuition for veterans. That was a bipartisan bill uh, that passed uh, unanimously out of the House and in the Senate. Uh, and that was from a lesson of me coming back from the war and hearing all my friends that had been in war and moved to a state and had to pay out-of-state tuition. And it seemed like it was a very dumb thing. And then I found out Arizona was doing the same thing. And since then, thousands of veterans uh, have gone to uh, school in Arizona on my bill. And so um, the, the, you know, the, the state rep that I worked for on, on that bill in, 20, uh, in 2011 is supporting me. Uh, the city council members I worked on when I was a staffer uh, to improve our neighborhoods, bring more police to the streets, uh, and start block watches, uh, Republican city council members are endorsing me. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have mayors uh, from all across the state that I've been helping with uh, these small town rural mayors that are ignored a lot of times by you know politicians. We've been bringing them uh, you know, federal funds to hire more police officers, you know, get uh, simple things such as a fire truck. Uh, we have all these uh, 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 mayors, Republicans, and independents that are now endorsing us because they know that we are the campaign uh, and the office that will pay attention and listen to them uh, and not just give lip service. Oh. Uh, so the economy, right? It's issue number one for voters in this election cycle. Um, and Vice President Kamala Harris has sh shown what she wants to do, her economic policy. So that's a boosting the child tax credit to $6,000, assistance for first-time home buyers, limiting taxes on tips, expediting affordable housing. Do you support all of these policies? Well, absolutely, and especially if you're, if you, in, this would be disproportionately beneficial to the Latino community. Uh, with the child tax credit, that reduced childhood poverty uh, among Latinos by 60%. If, if my mom had that, had had that growing uh, when I was growing up, it would have been such a big help. You know, we're the type of family that, you know, had to look at the cash register as everything was kind of coming across. Once in a while, we had to play the utility roulette, like what was going to be paid and what yeah. could be paid before something got shut off. A $6,000 a 6, child tax credit, refundable too, it's a big deal. And, it, and when I say that, it's not just people in poverty. There are families right now that are making seventy to uh, $80,000, you know, that feel the squeeze right now. So that's a big, big help. First time homeowners, Latinos right now are disproportionately um, uh, not, being, not able to buy homes. And we're a growing population. And we know in our community how obsessed we are about buying homes, right? It is part our, of our destiny of living in the American dream. But can, can these uh, policies pass Congress? So the child tax credit certainly passed Congress before. We have you know, some very good programs. Ostensibly, our Republican colleagues say they're for the child tax credit. You have J.D. Vance that's been walking around talking about it mm -hmm. uh, forever. Uh, so I think we have to put this to the test. Uh, we have passed this, obviously, during COVID. If you guys remember, we passed it for six months. Uh, so we have to we have to do it now. The other thing is, like, can we? It's, we need to. Working class Americans, not just Latinos, are just hurting. You feel it out there. They are working very, very hard. They're being the most productive they've ever been in the history of this country, and yet they feel poorer and poorer. And generationally, it feels even worse. So it's, it, this country has to do something about the status of middle class and working class Americans. They are hurting right now, and they feel that no one is actually fighting for them. So this position that the vice president is taking, that kind of position, I think is going to be extremely uh, helpful. Now, on the economy, and also issue number two uh, for most voters is immigration and border security. Yeah. Would you say that President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris have done a good job in the past four years? In the past four years? No, I don't think that's the case. But I think that could be the, the same thing you could say about the Trump administration and also about the, um, 
um, Obama administration. Uh, we need to have a balanced focus on the border. And uh, you know, I thought there was a very good approach that the, the Biden-Harris uh, campaign uh, the administration took with trying to pass the uh, comprehensive border uh, 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 bill uh, that was a bipartisan, that would have brought more border patrol uh, to the border, more border judges, immigration judges, uh, would have brought more resources to our small towns. Like I talked to the mayors in uh, Arizona, you know, the mayors of Nogales, the mayors of San Luis, the mayor of, of, of uh, you know, mayors along the border in general, and they're hurting. So that that when, when Republicans, especially Donald Trump uh, and Kerry Lake, rejected that compromise bill. Also, some Democrats also voted, didn't want that bill. Well, again, that's why it's a compromise, mm -hmm. right? And so in order for us to get the, bill, the votes together, we actually went to our most conservative Republicans and said, like, we'll work with you. And a lot of us wanted to see some level of immigration reform. We wanted to exchange, uh, you know, dreamers uh, on that. It was not going to happen. Uh, and unfortunately, that's how we didn't have some support. Now, you, you did work with the Republicans to push a bill that expedites CBP hiring. And, yep. and you, you are proud of it. You are the first Democrat to do that, right? What, what do you think that other Democrats haven't joined you in that? I don't know. I think the... I think there's a lot of Democrats that don't understand that you could be for border security and for immigration reform. You can be for making sure that we are, you know, checking uh, everything coming across the border, and at the same time, I want Dreamers to be here uh, and become uh, citizens. You can uh, add more immigration judges, uh, but still want to keep uh, and preserve the asylum system. Uh, and you can want to rectify the fact that there are 10 million people living in this country in the shadows that have been here for decades, that have roots here, that have family here, have business here, have houses here, and say, you know what, I want them to be on the pathway to citizenship. You can do that all you don't this doesn't have to be binary mm -hmm. right and if anything it, it the, the more that we allow uh, you know the, the abuse of the sound system the more likely you're gonna see the sound system fall the more the more that we allow the border to be uh, you know uh, have the problems at the border that we continue to see the less likely we're ever gonna get uh, immigration reform uh, and so I, I hope Democrats could understand that especially when they're thinking about Latinos Latino voters actually understand this yeah it's a lot of people that don't understand Latino voters but think they do that are acting and voting that way now Congressman, let me ask you this. Uh, in our last chat, you reminded me fairly quickly that you were polling high, regardless of who was leading the ticket. So you, you didn't care if it was President Biden or Vice President Kamala Harris. Lo que sea. Lo que sea, whatever, right? yeah. So let me ask you this. Would you be the one actually helping the harris waltz ticket winning Arizona? It's a good question. Um, Look, we've been running a campaign, for those who don't know, I, I, I jumped in this race uh, 19 months ago. And if I look a little tired, it's because I have a 13-month-old baby girl, and she's here, and she didn't care. Where is she? Uh, she's, with uh -huh. the, she's sleeping. She, and she gets naps. I don't get naps. <laughs> uh, and she didn't care that the convention got out at midnight last night, because she was up at 2 a.m. Um, <laughs> When I started this campaign, you know, I was basically on my own. Like, you know, the DS, uh, the, the traditional Democratic support wasn't there for me. Uh, the White House wasn't there supporting me because we're running against an incumbent. And so we had to run on our own. And so this is why I've always have had a, a very independent uh, streak in Arizona. It's because I've always been able to create my own systems of support, going out there, talking to voters, talking to leaders, talking to leaders in the community, developing real relationships that you know are coming to fruition now. Um, I think we're going to help each other out. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily going to be one way or, or the other. Uh, I think at this point, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, a tide that lifts all of our boats, uh, boats and votes. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to be very proud of, of the outcome uh, come November 5th. Congressman Ruben Gallego, thank you so much. For Muchas gracias. Bye. Gracias.